Welcome back to the Back Deck Tech. Today we have our second pre-gun upgrade guide for you from Dockmorn, featuring Death Toll, helmed by Winter, Cynical Opportunist. So Winter is a 4 cost 2-5 with Death Touch. Whenever Winter attacks, you are going to mill 3 cards, a little bit of self-mill, but that's all going to go into feeding our Delirium. So beginning of your end step, you get to exile cards from your graveyard that have 4 different types. This could be done through four different cards with only one type each, but it's better done with cards that have multiple card types which aren't overlapping. Then you get to choose one of those types that's a permanent, cheat it back onto the field with a finality counter. What's our game plan here? It's more self-mill, it's more graveyard recursion, and ultimately, uh, ways of getting rid of those finality counters so that if our creatures or other permanents we have you know, with those counters on them, do go away, they aren't gone for good. So, as always, we are going to cut 10 cards and put 10 cards in to up that synergy. So, let's take a look at what didn't make that cut. Mulch is at the top of our list. It is one in a green sorcery. We're going to reveal the top four cards of our library, take any lands from among them, put it in our hand, and throw the rest away. I think that this is a fine effect, right? It's potentially just mill four. Uh, there's a chance we're getting a little bit of land back, but I don't think we need it. I think we have better ways of getting around this. So, pretty happy to cut them. Burnished Heart follows that up. We're in green, we don't need the ramp. Yes, they are an artifact creature. So the two types is nice. The fact that we could sacrifice them to their own effect, also nice. But again, I feel like we have better things to do and we are going to replace them with another artifact creature. So I think there is some balance there. Inscription of Abundance. This feels like a weird card to have here. Uh, so it is an instant speed spell for one in a green. You could kick it for an additional two in a green. So possibly costing you upwards of five mana. Two counters on a creature. Gain life based on the greatest power you control, which obviously works in tandem with the plus one plus one counters and force a fight which again you could argue works with like everything else right you kind of want to kick this for five every time but I don't think it overall fits the theme of the deck and for that reason I cut it. Mold Graph Millipede. So five costs two two already kind of like whoa what are we doing here? Uh, when it enters we do mill three cards and put a plus one plus one counter on it for each creature in the grave. Uh, super strong if we already have a ton of creatures in the grave, but like if we don't, you know, this thing needs to have quite a bit of value in terms of creatures for it to be worth it at five mana. You know, we could mill three cards if we're just looking to fill the grave for far less than five mana. We could do it by just attacking with our commander, you know, I mean... Am I crazy? I mean, I, I, I don't feel like it has value here. It's gone. Solemn Simulacrum, better known as Sad Robot. Uh, again, you know, the ramp doesn't really make a huge difference. Yes, they are an artifact creature. Don't worry, we are replacing them with another card of two types, so it's okay. Should they die, we do get to draw a card, which is cool. You like the card draw, but again, you know, I'm, I'm okay to cut them. As I am with the Gnarl Wood Dryad. So Norwood Dryad is a 1-1 one, one that's such a for 1. If we have Delirium, they will get plus 2, plus 2, which is fine. Uh, a 3-3 three, three that's such a for 1 mana is obviously good. Um, but I think we have better things to do. There are stronger cards. We're in green. We don't necessarily, like, if this was ramping us somehow, I think they would get to stay. But they're not. Uh, and they would only get to stay at 1 mana ramp because they... One mana ramp we have in this deck is non-existent, right? So, Mindstone. So, Mindstone, I'm assuming they let in the deck because you get to sacrifice and draw a card, which adds an artifact to your graveyard. Uh, it's fine. It's, it's fine. You know, not, not much else to really say about it. Commander Sphere. Instant cut in these decks. Don't like it. You know, three mana... In you know, oh, now I get to, like, ramp for a whole one of any color. It's like, well, you're in a two-color deck. One of those colors is green. You don't need a ton of artifact ramp in green decks. You just don't. Ob Nixilis Reignited. So, five cost, five loyalty commander. 
Draw a card, lose life, destroy a creature. Eventually, a weird burn effect. Um, not really what this deck is doing. I don't know why they're in here. You know, we're also not even playing with life. So, like, if we were using life as a resource, it's like, yeah, sure, cool. Destroy target creature is not a bad effect by any means, but again, it's not really what the deck is doing. And the pain whenever anyone draws a card is also weird. So, happy to let them go. Last on our list of cuts is Carrion Grub. So a 4 cost, 0, 5, they do get plus X plus O based on the highest power of creature in our grave. So, again, it's very dependent on what's in our grave, and we're reanimating our grave constantly. You know, through both our commander, as well as some of the additions. So, I don't think Carrion Grub's ever going to be super strong in a 4 mana. You know, again, yeah, we're milling 4, there's some value there, but I don't think it's enough to keep it. Let's move down into our additions. So we're starting off with Hexavis. So Hexavis has a couple things going for it, right? Artifact creature, love it. It enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters, which is cool. So it's evasive, it has decent power. We could pay one to remove a plus one plus one counter from it to give flying to any of our other creatures. Or we could pay one to remove a counter from another creature, hint, hint, it's those finality counters and make Hexavus a little bigger. Um, so Hexavus is an easy add for me. Sir Conrad the Grim. Um, he doesn't care where the creatures came from. He just cares that they were put into a graveyard or came out of a graveyard. And he's going to deal one to each opponent every time it happens. You could also pay one to black and have each player mill a card. He's an obvious include in this deck and it feels a little weird that they didn't include him. Ripples of Undeath. So this is a Modern Horizons 3 card. It's pretty budget though, so it's around like the $2 to $3 mark. For one in the black, you get this enchantment. At your pre-combat main phase, you're going to mill three cards, right? Repeated mill. Two mana. We love it. Then, you can pay one and three life to take a card from among those and put it back into your hand, right? We're definitely not always going to pay that one and three life, but if there's something decent that got milled, that we really want to cast immediately, we have access to it. If we can save it for later, our commander is going to get it back for us. So it's fine. I'm going to butcher this name. Just going to preempt that. Matt Zalanti, Matt Zalanti, the Great Door. Probably butchered it. Apologies for anyone who knows how to pronounce it properly. That person ain't me. So this is a three cost enchant, not enchantment. This is a three cost legendary artifact. We get tap it to draw a card and discard a card. So we're selectively choosing what we want to throw into our grave. Works great again for Sir Conrad if we throw away a creature. Uh, if it has multiple types, it's great for all of our delirium effects. All good. We could also pay for and tap it to transform it. We can only do so if there are at least four types in our grave. This works with the delirium that we're already working with. What does it transform into, Mech? Ah, well, it transforms into the core. So this is a legendary land. I typically don't mess with lands in general when working on these decks, but because the first side of it kind of feeds a card selection slash mill effect and it does delirium things, I felt like it was okay. So what does this land do? You tap it, you add X mana for one color, where X is the number of permanent cards in your grave. This is so much ramp. It's a ridiculous amount of ramp. And like, we have a couple mana sinks, not a ton of them, but like enough that like, I think it's worth it to do this. We could also cast a bunch of things from our hand with all this mana. I think it's an excellent addition, possibly the golden nightmare of the deck. Buried Alive literally just throws three creatures uh, into our grave. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's like 40 cents. Moving on, we have Milliken. So Milliken is an artifact creature. Already great for us. Two types. Zero, one for two mana. That we can tap to mill a card and add a generic mana. So we're ramping. We're milling. It's everything we want. Marin of Clan Nell Toth. 
So four mana, three, four. Whenever another creature we control dies, we're gonna get an experience counter. At our end step, we get to choose any creature in our grave. If its mana value is less than the mana value equal to the number of experience counters we have, boom, onto the field. Otherwise, they will just go back to our hand, allowing us to reuse and abuse them. Breach the Multiverse. You know it, you love it, it's great. So, seven cost, sorcery. We're milling ten, we're ripping a creature from each player's graveyard. Just right back onto the field. Power Conduit's up next, and they're here for the same reason as Hexavis, and that's to remove those pesky counters, those finality counters. We don't like them, we don't want them. Uh, in doing so, we could pass out a charge counter, we don't really have a reason to, or we could put out a plus one plus one counter, which is nice, we'll take it, right? We're really here for the first effect. What it gives us as that return for the cost is icing on the cake. And the last of our additions is the Death Rite Shaman. So Deathrite Shaman is a one cost, one two. We can tap them to exile land from any graveyard and add mana. It's a little bit of ramp and it doesn't have to be our graveyard. So if your opponents are playing any kind of like fetches, be they as basic as, you know, Termorphic Expanse, all the way up to really good fetches like Wooded Foothills. You know, it's like a little stronger. Any of like the real good ones though. Um, boom, we're getting rid of it, they can't recur it, we're adding mana. Black and attack, we'll get to exile and instant sorcery, and each opponent's gonna lose two life. Again, it doesn't have to be from our graveyard, it could be from anybody's. Green and attack, exile a creature card from any graveyard, and we'll gain two life. I just think the Death Rite Shaman's really versatile, it's a little bit of graveyard hate, which is always good to have, and it's just good value. But guys, that is the overall deck tech itself. You know, I don't really have a ton of honorable mentions for this one. I know I normally do. Let's go over them though. Uh, so after Math Analyst, so this is a two cost, one three, it enters, we mill three. We could pay four and sack it to return all of our lands to the, from grave to battlefield tapped. Dread Return, so Dread Return has us target a creature in our grave, bring it back to the battlefield. We can flash it back by sacrificing three creatures, uh, which is going to refill our grave. Also, you know, we would lose our uh, Dread Return, so we would lose a sorcery, but we'll gain three creatures. Incarnation Technique, five cost with Demonstrate. We're going to mill five, return a creature from grave to battlefield. Uh, so to demonstrate, we would have to let a, an opponent basically cast a copy for free, but then we get a second copy. Uh, I don't feel like we have enough big bombs in this deck in terms of creatures to justify running it. Uh, but I think it, if you wanted to go that route, you definitely could. Malevolent Rumble. So for one in the green, you're going to reveal the top four. Choose a permanent among them to put in your hand. The rest are going to go to the grave. And you're going to create some Eldrazi spawn, which you can sacrifice for a colorless mana. Victimize. You choose two creatures in your grave. Sacrifice one. Cheat them both back. Super solid. Entomb is honestly bordering on not being budget. It's like 10 to 12 bucks, uh, a little higher over on Carb Kingdom, but that's okay. Uh, but it's literally just go ahead and search for any creature, throw them in the grave, or not any creature, any card. Very versatile. Mistress Bobble, just cause like it's a zero cost, you could sacrifice it immediately. Uh, go ahead and draw. So that's cool. Uh, the Wondrous Crucible is seven, so kind of expensive. It does give ward two to all of your creatures. End step, you mill two, then you exile a non-land card at random, and you get to cast it for free. Animate Dead, uh, just a reanimation spell, pretty budget, like five to seven bucks. Out of the tombs, also in that like same like little higher, like six to seven. Um, but at upkeep, you put some Eon counters on it, and then you mill equal to the number of Eon counters on it. If you would draw while you don't have any cards in your deck, you in fact don't lose. Uh, instead, you have to return a creature card from Grave to Battlefield, and if you can't do that, then you lose. But that is the deck tech upgrade guide for Death Toll from Duskborn. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell to ensure you never miss an episode. 
do all the algorithm things. I'm Mechanized Minion, the Energy King, and until next time, good luck with your builds.